What's up, world? It's me again. I am currently in Tono. I'm driving around just for fun. I don't really know where I am. And uh, it's pretty nice looking scenery around here. It is Sunday. I think everyone is uh, burning all of their leftover grass from their fields. There's a cat. Uh, you couldn't see it. It's really funny. The cat's out here. It's like super wild. Very not house cat like. There's a really slow truck coming up. Some dramatic lighting going on. Isn't this awesome? Dramatic lighting. Wow. I'm going to pass this guy. Pass that guy. So yeah, dramatic lighting. Um, so what was I talking about? Everyone's burning their grass that's left over. If you don't know who I am or know nothing about me, I live in Iwate, which is way up north in Japan. Not as north as Hokkaido, if you know nothing about Japan. But still, it's a really beautiful area. Because it's lazy with dogs, holding their dogs in case they don't run into the streets. <laughs> it's so funny, this lighting's so terrible, I'm sure you can't see anything. Okay, that looks better. So, what is up in my world? Pretty much nothing. I'm just kind of bored and wanted to give everyone a view of what's going on here. So I'm probably going to do some editing because this is uh, not incredibly interesting. I just decided to go out and get a, a rock star, get a little taste of home. And uh, went on a longer drive than I expected. I always feel weird when I'm filming and uh, some Japanese people drive by. So, you know, you can film in your room, in your apartment, in your house. And that's cool, but you know, you're just in your house. You're not really giving anyone very amazing perspective of what it's like living in another country. Pretty beautiful out here though. But what my point was is that, you know, I could like pretend my apartment was in Japan and like just like put up a bunch of Japanese crap and I could be in Russia. You wouldn't know. This is more interesting to me. At least it would be if I wasn't living in Japan, which I am. Um, it says turn left to go to Hanamaki, but I want straight on the way here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go the same way I went. I'm on that don't get lost in a foreign country tip right now. It's really funny, like uh, if you're living in a in Japan, and especially if you're living like way out in the country like I am. If you see like uh, someone who you think can speak English, you kind of get excited. You're like, a, you're like a dog on a walk that sees another dog and you're like, oh my gosh, you're a dog. And you want to go up and talk to them, but it's really stupid because you don't know how long they've been here for, or they're totally over it, a number of factors. Today I was uh, at my favorite bakery, Michelle, and I saw, you know, some white dude. And I was like halfway tempted to go and talk to him, and I didn't because it's just weird. It's just weird. So I had a bad experience the last time I uh, ran into a foreigner. I don't know if I talked about this in my last video. I was in I was in Sendai. And there was this girl in the line at Starbucks. She came up behind me, you know. It's not like I like tapped her on the shoulder walking down the street. Like she was behind me in the line in Starbucks. And I said, hey, how's it going? 
you know, I guess, you know, she's from Sendai, which means uh, she's got a lot more chances to speak English. I don't. I really don't. So, it's stimulating. I mean, sure, uh, my Japanese has improved by living out in the country. She got, she got a grandpa riding his bike, heck so. Oh, you can't see anything. This glare is out of control. These people are like, they're gonna kill me. People driving towards me. Anyways, it's stimulating learning Japanese, but at the same time, when you do see someone who speaks English, you know, you want to say hi. At least I do. You can give me some feedback about that, what you think. So, that was my day. I went home and, uh, I went and bought some more books to study kanji at Staya. I used to be better at kanji when I was, you know, in college and studying it on a regular basis. Um, and even though I work in Japan, my job is to basically deal with English-speaking uh, other countries. I was just trying to stop for a guy, and he, he wasn't having it. He was, I'll wait for you. Freaking guy, Gene. I won't take any pity or anything. Look okay, at Hanabata! Yay! Everything's pretty and lit up. God, this is some really good footage. Really good footage. Um. So yeah. And I was thinking about when I was at Staya that. You know, I can continue studying from my textbooks that I bought in America when I was in college, which I do, I review from those, or I could buy Kokugo books, which are just, you know, language books for Japanese students. Look at all these kids having a good time. What are they doing? Awesome. So, I don't... I was thinking about the pros and cons of that, and, uh, you know, cons could possibly be that, uh, it would be more time-consuming to learn from a Kokugo book, but I'm learning the same way someone in Japan would learn, which kind of makes sense to me. I don't know. Does that make sense to everyone else? See, you know, you learn from a foreign textbook foreign by, like, I mean, like an English, a book written in English teaching Japanese, and you can get pretty far, but there's certain conversational and cultural context that I don't think you're going to get from those type of books, because, I don't know, I've been, I've been in Japan not very long, I'm not going to be claiming I'm on that Oyaji tip, because I'm not. Uh, but you learn stuff that you don't learn from textbooks really fast. I don't, you know, and of course I don't have any awesome examples of that right now. Uh, but, anyways. So that's what I've been up to. Just decided to go on a drive and film a little bit. I didn't decide to film, but I was like, hey, I got my camera. I'm driving around. I'm sure somebody who maybe lives somewhere else or in another part of Japan would want to see what's like in the lovely countryside of Iwate Prefecture. And indeed, it is nice. The people are really nice. You know what's really funny is like, you know, I can say that people are nice. When I was in Tokyo for the few, like, week I was there, people are really nice too. Like, the first time I was there, I had like a, a phone number to call my boss, and uh, I had to use a payphone. Ah, if you see my other video of me returning, you know about that. And it was really easy. I had a really easy time because I asked some other, uh, maybe a 55, 60 year old guys to help me dial on the phone, and I did, and then I drank some beer with them. And they were total strangers, and it was awesome. Everyone's burning stuff, everywhere. That, that's, that's a cool thing to do. And, Iwate is to gather up some grass and burn it. That is the, sh the, the cool.
cool thing. Like I said before, I'm, I'm gonna avoid cussing. I'm taking the high road in my YouTube videos. So what else is going on? What else is happening? Oh, the Olympics. The Olympics are happening in Japan. And you know what, what's really interesting about the Olympics in Japan? Is if there are not any Japanese people competing in an event, there's pretty much no coverage. And if a Japanese person loses an event, they pretty much stop covering it, which I find really weird. Like, cause uh, I like judo, I do judo. Um, and the other night, uh, I was watching, and uh, what's his name? Ah, I'm gonna sound really stupid right now. Is, is, it, is it Ogawa? I think it was Ogawa. He, he lost. And he's in the same weight division as France's Teddy Vernier. Probably one of the best judo players ever, honestly, Teddy Rainier, as much as it pains me to say it, because uh, I don't know whether it's because he's gigantic or he's really good. He's really good, but anyways, after, a friend, uh, after Japan's competitor lost, they stopped showing, they stopped showing judo, and I find that really interesting because it's a Japanese sport, and they're like, no, nah, we're done, and uh, so you didn't get to see the gold, the, the gold match, like the, the the match for the gold medal for judo in Japan. It was not televised. So very interesting. Uh, in terms of uh, Olympic judo in Japan, this is the first year that Japan has not won a gold in the men's. They won a gold in females with Matsumoto, and she was awesome, but. It's the first time ever that men's did not take home a gold. And, uh, too bad. Uh, a lot of people that uh, I know here have said that, uh, you know, judo has been on the decline in terms of popularity in Japan, and uh, they said that that's, that's probably going to hurt it. So, too bad. So I am pulling up to Shin Hanamaki Eki which is the Shinkansen station for Hanamaki. There's also Standard Hanamaki Eki, and it's not really called Standard Hanamaki, Standard Hanamaki Eki, it is just called Hanamaki Eki, and that is because that was there before Shinkansen. So there's two train stations. And you know, this is only Shinkansen, the other one is like if you want to take a slow train from here to Morioka or somewhere else pretty close, which takes a lot longer but it's cheaper if you want to pretend you're in the 60s on a cool classic Japanese movie that's the train for you so that's pretty much it I'm ranting I'm ranting and raving uh, I went to some used shops today because I wanted to you know buy some stuff for some reason, I don't know what it is, I wanted to get a baseball glove because I wanted to play catch. And, uh, because it's a very social community in Hanamaki. People play softball, baseball, and it's really fun. And I don't have a mitt. I don't have a glove. How embarrassing as an American. No glove. So anyways, I decided I wanted to get a glove, and uh, <laughs> I went to a variety of used stores and uh, didn't find what I was looking for. But uh, what I did find that was cool was uh, Technique's turntables are cheap in Japan, because I, I don't know if you guys are into DJ stuff, you're probably not, uh, but Technique's SL1200s are discontinued. They're like the turntable for DJs and uh, they were going used in America for you know $150, $200 and then they went discontinued and jumped up in price. So now they're still cheap here. I guess that's because Japan doesn't care about old stuff as much as Americans do. Like they think records are the most weird, old, outdated things in the world. Not like in America where you're like, ah, vinyl is cool because it sounds good. They're like, vinyl's annoying because it's big and you can't put it in your car. Which I can understand. That makes sense.
So, I've got maybe 40 subscribers on YouTube now. Yeah! 40, you heard me. And I'm approaching 70,000 views. I'm considering considering doing some sort of live chat forum about stuff. So if you're, if you're into it, just contact me. We'll do something. I probably got a friend who's gonna, he just he just moved from Korea to Japan and we're probably gonna go way the hell up north on Honshu and check out some crazy stuff soon. And, uh, but you know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about forums and stuff and like a live chat thing. All right. So I am closing back into my home territory. There's trees. Yeah, nature. God, it's hot. I guess that's it. That's enough of me mumbling. And I've got some complaints that I mumble in some of my other videos, which uh, I'm sorry if I mumble. I will try to enunciate my words more clearly. See ya. Uh...